What's going on everybody? This is Clark Beckham and you're watching the Idol Breakdown. Let's get started. First, we have just a snippet of the Platinum Ticket Trio. I, I have said this every year, if I had to pick to be a Platinum Ticket holder or not, I would absolutely pick not. I don't like the idea of being put on this pedestal and then having this big number in the beginning with my fellow Platinum people singing for all the other contestants as if I'm something better than they are. I don't like that. Now, uh, they did reveal and show the full trio performance on YouTube, and it's pretty good. And they're all pretty deserving of that platinum ticket status. We get Tristan. He said that he would never. Tristan is not just authentic country. He's interesting. I am fascinated at what he's going to do every single time he takes a stage. And what he sings, the style of music that he sings, is not my cup of tea. But I, I can't wait till he comes up on stage. That's a big deal. There are a lot of other country people in the show, but no one that is that interesting and different. And the song that he wrote... I mean, come on, the song that he wrote with Willie Mae, the old lady at church, and then made it so great, an old school country hymn fusion type of a thing go that's going on. I loved it. And let's just all remember, as I record this on Easter Sunday, to just get wrapped up in Jesus. Next, we have Keiko. What if I'm not enough? Oh. What a song that he gave us. And it kind of punched me in the gut because the only side of the story we get is I'm going to make it. I'm going to do great things. And I believe. And I'm going to be a star. And then all of a sudden we get a just tsunami of reality of like, I've got dreams to be a star. I've got dreams to be something big. And I've got big dreams. What if I'm not good enough? Or specifically, a song said, what if I'm not enough? Jeez, what if I'm just one in seven billion people who just wants the same things everybody else does and I'm just not enough? And he gets emotional in the middle of it too. Um, he's a good singer. He's a good singer. Um, his strength is his songwriting. And I think he knows that. But he's a really good singer, too. And he's really likable. He's an interesting guy. Because he definitely puts on the persona of songwriter guy. And I wonder if that's part of his imposter syndrome, too. That he doesn't feel comfortable owning, like, I'm a freaking singer. And so if he hides behind the hi, I'm the interesting, intrinsic thinking songwriter guy and oh, don't mind me, like that kind of persona, that that might even be part of that imposter syndrome. I don't know. I'm really psychoanalyzing him. Um, but I want to say he's got the goods to be a singer singer. And he is a singer singer, but he, he, can, he can show off that way if he wants to and, and just know that he's good in that way. Emmy. I let you meet my family. I like Emmy a lot. I didn't get a lot from her in this episode. They highlighted her a lot, and then she didn't do that great, in my opinion, which tells me they want us to keep an eye on her and fall in love with her, which tells me she's probably in the top 24, which is exciting because I really like her. Jennifer Jeffries. In those words that you sing. Her audition, she started singing, and my note was her vocal tone is very different. A lot of vocal instructors would correct it. I am always of the opinion, style is style, and the artist gets to decide what their style is and may not need correcting, even though it's not my cup of tea. I... This time, it, it 
it just moved the needle moved a little more in the direction of I I'm not a personal fan of what she brings to the table as a singer. That doesn't mean she's not going to be a star like Katie said. It's just that her fan base is going to be niche. It's going to be specific, which is a huge quality of commercial success, by the way. So that's exactly what I hope happens. And honestly, that's exactly what I think is going to happen. Naya, we have a lot of just flat-footed gospel singers in this episode, in, uh, in the show in general. She's one of them. There's something special when someone just belts and just delivers a killer note or run or belt and their face is just, it looks like she's just watching TV and just singing and she's hitting these crazy notes while she does it. Let's talk about, mm, let's talk about JC Matthews. Let's talk about JC and Mia both. Let's talk about JC first. I thought she did wonderful. I thought she did great. Here's where she didn't do great is when she was pushing and trying to be ultra aggressive vocally and belt. And I wonder why she would ever do that. I wonder why she would push past her comfort zone and her skill level to push and belt and try to not be timid. I wonder why she would why she would do that. Maybe it's because the judges are giving her crappy to say it as nicely as I can possibly imagine. Advice. Terrible, terrible advice. If I cussed on this channel, I would cuss in this moment right now, and I would not use the word crappy when I'm talking about the advice. You know who did better? Mia. You know why? Because she didn't push and belt like the judges told her to, except for the very end, and she kind of missed a little bit, and it was a little, it was a little too much. Didn't really work out. On the judges' side, we think about the contestants having a lot of pressure, lights, camera, action. Now it's your turn to perform. The judges have the exact same. Pressure, not the same stakes, perhaps. But they have lights, camera, action. Okay, say something really good. Say some expert advice, ready, go. And sometimes you don't have expert advice to give. I don't do it live with the show. I watch, I make notes, and then I do a video, and then I edit out the dumb stuff I say. But they have to come up with the stuff right, right there on the spot. And sometimes they say things that they should not. And sometimes they give advice that should not be followed and they probably don't think it should be followed either, but they got to say something. So they say something. And then the contestants take that as gospel. The producers are saying, uh, hey, in this interview, make sure you mention something about what the judges said and how you're trying to prove them wrong or how to show them that you listened. When in reality, the judges are just talking out of not their brain. Let's keep going. K blocks. Why don't you come on over battery? Okay. I don't remember K blocks in the audition process, but I remember her now. K blocks does whatever comes to mind, whether it's sticking her tongue out multiple times in the song where it makes no sense or dancing, or any any other thing, anything that comes to her, her mind, she just does. She has absolutely no filter. And I, that should be commended. And it brings not just fun, because she's being like silly, it's more than that. She's connected with her like ethos. Art is done at the highest level from that place, from just doing it and not thinking too much like, oh, should I do that? Should I not? Is that appropriate? Is that not? And she's a great example to us all. Katie encourages to push and says, you're an alto, but push, you might surprise yourself. I hate that advice because the irony is when you tell someone to push and they might surprise themselves, that leads people to getting more excited 
and trying to go for it, like get amped up and go for it. And what does that lead to? Yelling. That leads to attitude, which leads to yelling, emotions, and poor decisions. You need emotion, connection to the song, but not this false sense of sang an attitude that comes out and you sing notes that you shouldn't sing that are past your limits. The reality is when you want to sing and belt those notes that Katie's talking about, that when you hear any of these singers belt these crazy power notes, the irony is they're not getting big and loud. They're actually compressing and going into mixed voice and they actually are thinking down and in and focus like a laser. So the advice to like, come on, go there, go for it, push. You might surprise yourself. It's just gonna lead to more people yelling. A lot of people ask me what I mean when I'm talking about the mixed voice thing and this like, compressed thing. I've taught it before. I'm, I'm not great at it. The only reason I can teach it is because it was taught to me really well, it changed my voice forever. Um, sometimes people will pick it up just naturally and sometimes they can just learn it. I learned it when I was 16 from this program that I've talked about before on here called Singing Success. Changed my whole life. I would not have done well on American Idol if I didn't have that training. Um, I'm friends with them now. So if you want to get involved with them, you can. I've got a discount code in the description. You can buy like all their online stuff and it's pretty cheap. McKenna Breinholt. Ooh, this was top three for me. She was top three. She was my favorite of the night up until that, at that moment. The low notes that she hit us with, sheesh. This is why it was so impressive. Not just because, wow, her notes are really low. Her range is low. And her tone is so smooth and so nice. I love the breathy tone in general. Her singing that low tells me that she is cool, calm, and collected, and her nerves are not affecting her body. This is what I mean by that. When you get nervous, your nervous system causes you to involuntarily flex your muscles around your vital organs in important vulnerable areas, like your throat, like your lungs. You lose lung capacity involuntarily. Nothing you can do about it. You feel nervous, your body thinks you're in danger, you might be falling down or getting in a fight, those things kind of block out those areas for protection. You lose about two notes on the top and the bottom of your of your range. It feels like that was the bottom of her range. And the fact that she could still access that tells me that she is cool, calm, and collected in those moments, which is very impressive in that stage and that environment. Aji. I, if you guys remember, was one of the only people that was a little hesitant to jump on the Aji train, and I didn't love his audition. I loved this performance, though. I admire, and I think his stage presence is so impressive and cool. Kind of like K-Blocks, but not as reckless. Just whatever he wants to do, he's just going to do it. And he's got tons of confidence that just oozes from him on stage. Picks great songs. Picks great songs. The perfect song for him to pick, for him to sing. Has a lot of attitude. Uh, I just, I, he did a great job. This was a big, big, big step uh, in the right direction for Aji. Made. Made. Okay, let's talk about Made. I've got a lot of things to say about my day, as you could probably imagine. And some things that'll surprise you, I bet. She starts singing and she stops and goes, says something awkward. And then they start again. And then she says, you know what? Let's just do it a cappella because this isn't what we rehearsed. And everyone's like, oh shoot, she just threw the piano player under the bus. And then she sings a cappella and she actually sings a lot better a cappella than when she was singing with the piano. She, when she was singing with the piano, she was flat and her voice sounded hoarse and like she was missing notes, not giving each note enough breath support to actually land them. And then she blames the piano player. And I'm like, is the piano player why you were flat? Um, but, 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 like I said, then she sings way better when she's a cappella. So maybe that distraction really did result in her singing not as, well, 
then she leaves and then comes back and gets to do it again. I think two things are probably true because of this. One, she went to the producers and was like, hey, yo, this is my one opportunity. This is not how we rehearsed it. We rehearsed it this way, and he did this. That's not my fault. I got to get a fair opportunity. And American Idol is very big on fair opportunity. So the second thing, so one, she went to the producers. Two, there's probably a legitimate cause, the legitimate cause for her to do it again. And the producer, said, oh, right, crap, you're right. You do need to do it again. So it was probably actually not her fault that the piano player was kind of changing things. Now, listening to what the piano player did at the beginning and then the second time. The beginning, he was playing very matter of fact, just very straight. And then the second time, it was like 6-8 ballad and full of emotion and a different spin. Now, he's got a billion songs to learn and play that day. So I understand, totally reasonable, that he would forget specific little nuances that might have been covered in rehearsal. She kind of snaps back in the interview afterwards. And she's like, oh my gosh, for Luke to pull the card, and then he pulled the card, how's your voice feeling? Okay, first of all, that's not that's that's called grace and kindness. Um, and you agreed. You're like, it's not what I want. <laughs> okay, so I don't know why you're complaining that he pulled the card and then you agree. It sounds like your card possibly that you're pulling. And then she started making fun of Luke in the interview. And I was like, okay. She goes, obviously I can sing. Can. Can's the correct word. You can. Obviously she can sing. A lot of people can sing. She's got a ton of talent. I don't know if she knows how to drive it. I think she's got a V8 engine, maybe a twin turbo engine. I don't think she knows how to drive it. It feels like to me, every time she puts her gas foot on the gas, we're hitting some walls and it's a little of a bumpy ride. So can sing, yeah, sure, you can sing. And then she does the heart thing. And I'm so happy because she had heart like heart, like real country. And I'm so happy Luke asked, hey, why'd you do heart like that? Because it was full of like attitude. And she's like, and then she started speaking in, in a British accent and was like, well, since, I don't know why I sound like Michael Caine. That's how my British accent. Well, since you told me I didn't know who I was, I wanted to show you that I could be anything because that's what an American Idol is, isn't it? I don't think any words that came out of her mouth had any logic to them at all didn't fit made no like okay so you're telling me that he was you said heart because you wanted to show him all the people you could be because he doesn't think you know who you are i think you're proving his point i think you're proving his point and then the final blow for me was she said i feel proud of what i did I really feel like I showed boss energy. You could, you can call it whatever you want. I might use a different word. I don't think I would call it a proud moment of boss energy. I don't think anybody watched that and was like, oh my gosh, yes, what a boss. I don't, I don't think so. And I'll tell you what, it's not going to get you far in the competition. Well, I'm pretty sure she was cut. It's not going to get her very far in a career working with people if she acts like that wherever she goes. Let's keep going. KB. You want me to lie here. Best of the night. My favorite of the whole night. I did not know she was this good of a singer. I knew she was good and I loved her audition. I didn't know she was this good. Take away the emotional connection, which of course we don't, because that's what singing and art is about. But even if you did, just strictly left brain analytical side of things, elite vocal talent was on display when she opened her mouth. 
And then the emotional connection. It was a 10 out of 10, a 12 out of 10. I was crying. Everyone was crying. Chainly had tears. I bet. I didn't look over, but I bet she did. She might be... She's top three for me. Now, I say top three. It's not my prediction. I'm saying she's in my top three personal favorite as of right now. There is a massive difference in these videos when I ask you to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. A massive difference. I've forgotten the past couple of videos and it's like less than half of the likes. So, just a friendly reminder. Will Mosley. Uh, yeah, I think he's there because he represents a style, country, Chris Stapleton, raspy style of country, and he's very good. There are a lot of those singers around. I don't, I don't find anything super unique with him. I like him. He's got. He's great for the show. He's got a great personality. He's very likable. He's a good old boy. He's very talented. Sounds great when he sings. He's got rasp. He's got all the stuff. But it it's not moving me a lot. Then we have a quick montage of three singers, three monsters, Roman, Mackenzie, and Justice. Roman sounds awesome. Still doing the super, super churchy gospel thing. Oh, I forgot to talk about Quintavious. Quintavious, same thing. They're singing pop songs, but it's a, they're doing it in a gospel way that's really impressive and it's flashy, but I don't know if there's anywhere to go with that for American Idol or for a pop career. McKenzie sounds like a million bucks. I wish they would have used him more. I wish that we would have seen him more and he's featured more. But he sounded awesome. Falsetto and the runs that he does from there. It's like every time I watch him, I'm thinking, oh yeah, a TikTok guy that can sing, I guess. Like, because his TikTok is so huge. And then he starts singing. I'm like, man, this dude's a freaking singer. He's not a guy who got really big on a social media platform. And then like, oh yeah, by the way, I like to sing. I'll sing a little bit. Here, look, I can sing. Like, that's not him. He's a singer as much as anybody is a singer in this entire season. He's crushing. And then Justice. Justice. Sings that song. Locks eyes. Eyes open. Delivering and deliberate. Strong. That's just laser-like focus destroys that song. We got a lot of gospely powerhouse singers like Justice and I am not complaining. Last we got Ziggy. <laughs> I thought Ziggy crushed. I loved Ziggy's performance. This is the best I've heard him sing. I've only heard him sing twice his audition in here, but great emotional connection. He was last, so he's got all those nerves, all that sitting and waiting, and then gets to sing finally. And it's, it reminded me of like Celine Dion. Like just beautiful belting notes. The camera was doing the dolly swing thing. And he just he just he's just good, dude. There's no nothing nothing more to say, just really well executed. Now let's talk about people that got cut that make me wanna cry, and let's talk about people that got through that I'm specifically excited about. But before we do that, let me shout out some new members that we have to the Groove Crew. First, what's a member? Member is someone who pays $5 a month to the channel, and then they get access to the watch party, the members only live stream watch party. That's when I live stream myself, and sometimes Chanley, watching this episode of American Idol. If you're on the West Coast, I found out that you can stream abc.com with a VPN, so like expressvpn.com, and then you can watch the East Coast broadcast, and then you can live stream with me. That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm in Arizona right now. That's what I did, so it's great. $5 a month for that. New members of the Groove Crew that took advantage of that are Kimberly Weatherford, Shy Severe, Barbara Chen, T. Johnson, Emmy, Cindy Standish, and Fran, Mark Einard, Melody, Holiday Hamilton, Nikki Hurst, Rosemary Haywood, Penny Cower, and Ethan Brown. Welcome to the Groove Crew. We say goodbye to Connell. 
That sucks. I really like Connell and wanted to hear what else he could do uh, in the show. J.C. Matthews, which I think she was reality show assassinated by Katy Perry's poor advice. Poor is a nicer word. People who made it that I'm looking forward to watching more specifically. Keiko and Mackenzie. Those are the two people that I'm really interested to see what they can do moving forward. Keiko just moves me every time he sings, which is the whole point. And Mackenzie is just real interesting to me. And he has some agility in his voice and beautiful falsetto stuff. And I just keep, I just want to see more. I feel like I know what I'm getting with everybody else. It feels like McKenzie's got just extra little special something that I'm interested to hear more of. And then again, Keiko just uh, hits me right in the heart. If you're watching this as a premiere, we're going to do the live Q&A real quick before we hit the next episode. If you don't know what I'm talking about when I say live premiere, the best way to watch these is live as it releases as a premiere right here on YouTube at 6 Central the night after the American Idol episode. I said all of that right. So Sunday night, we just had an episode. Monday night, we have another episode. So we're going to have this premiere at 6 o'clock as you're watching this, six o'clock central time on Monday night, have the live Q and A and then watch the show. And then I'm gonna record another video and then we'll have that premiered the next night at 6 p.m. central. Got it? I think I got it too. All right, that's it. Thanks. Have a great one. And happy Easter, happy late Easter.